ego-driven purpose for your life will leave you feeling empty and still not enough because the lie remains. The lie is in the subconscious. Now, what about the purpose of your soul, your true purpose, your high calling? It is to be what you are, which is perfect and blameless and good and right and true. Your purpose is to remember, to remember what you are, to remember that you're a piece of God, and then to express that particular reflection of God in what you're doing, in the thing in front of you. If you can find a drop of love in you and begin to give it, then you are living in a high purpose, my friend, a very high purpose. Fear is the only error to block out love. So love and accept yourself and others. And in that you are living your purpose. So we're here to experience life, to experience whatever's going on in front of us. And a lot of you, I talk to you all the time. You feel stuck in a certain area of your life. I'm stuck in this bad job. I'm stuck in this terrible relationship. My kid is acting out and driving me crazy. I'm stuck in this chronic illness and you feel distress in your in your being because you you know you're not embodying all that you could as a soul and you feel this gap between where you are and where you want to be but i assure you there is no lack there is no limitation and whatever your circumstance is right now is exactly the right circumstance for you welcome welcome okay let's get started with a channel from judah the topic tonight is what is my purpose that's the big question I hear from every one of you guys with that, with very few exceptions. Every time we get together one-on-one, -on -one, I hear you asking, why am I here? What is my soul's purpose? Why am I called to be in this life? What do I need to do? So we're going to be talking about that tonight. Let's begin with a channel. Hmm. Hello. Hello, dear ones, dear ones. We are Judah. We are Judah of the angelic Judah nation. And you also are Judah of the Judah family of the Judah nation. So let's all join together as a family of both angels and human souls, we are not as different as you might think. We might just be a few steps ahead of you. That is all. That is all. We are your big brothers and sisters. We are here showing you the way, just like a big brother or sister teaches the young one how to tie their shoe or brush their teeth or wait for the school bus in the mornings and so on. We are here in support of you. We are here. We are here just to love you and be in relationship with you. You see, that is our primary purpose. Our primary purpose is to love you and be in relationship with you. Why do we do that? Why is that our purpose? Because we love our creator. We are in perfect union with our creator, with the wishes of our creator. And the creator loves you and wants to be in relationship with you. Not very complicated, is it? So we want to begin answering this question for you tonight. What is your purpose? What is your purpose? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We hear and see you asking that. So we want to talk about it from two different angles, which is very common, which we do frequently on this, 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 this channel. You see, there is, um, there are egoic parts. They're not you, they're conditioned ways of thinking and being that would drive you to want to find a purpose, a higher purpose than what you are embodying. And so when the ego is asking this question, we would answer it differently than when your soul is asking the question. So lift, listen carefully carefully here for a bit. So when this question arises in your heart, what is my purpose? Why am I here? What in the world am I doing? How do I live? You must discern. Is it the ego asking this question or is it your soul? Now, when the ego asks this question, it's because you've already done this, that, or the other, and somehow your desires still are not satisfied. And so the culture and uh, cultural conditioning, advertising, media, religious, standards, educational standards, parental expectations, all of these will cause you to think that you must add on something else to be what you are to fulfill your purpose, whatever this divine purpose elusive thing might be, it seems. And so all of this conditioning of the ego will drive you to think you need something more added to the mix in order to fulfill your destiny, or you need to give up something. You need to eat less, 
you need to do this, that, or the other, meditate more, and so on. And so the ego will always tell you, you must be more of this and less of that. Because you see, listen carefully for the lie. This is how you identify the ego. It is based on this lie that you are not enough. You're not enough, you see, it tells you. So you must be something more. You must have a higher purpose than just this, than just this. Is this all that is, you see? The ego is a malcontent. Recognize that, my dears. The ego is a malcontent. It's always telling you, you haven't done enough, been enough, and so on. And so this discontentment is a sign that it is a foot. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. And so the way of goals and goal setting, this is, 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 is a popular topic in personal development, is it not? And in growth. And we're not saying there's anything wrong with having a goal. Thing is, is it goal of the ego or of the soul, which we're going to differentiate tonight. But you see, if you're in an ego state, you will set a goal and you may achieve it. And if you achieve it, it will fall flat. There will be a ring of emptiness to it. This vessel remembers in her Nashville days as she pursued her music career. She was invited to the Grammys and put on her special dress and her fancy shoes and earrings and she looked like a star and walked down the red carpet, participated in the event, but once she was there, what she saw was is simply a lot of empty people. A lot of empty people trying to impress one another. And she also was there to try to impress someone in the hopes that they would finally give her that big break she was looking for, you see. And so when she went back to her hotel that night and laid her head down on the pillow, there was a feeling of emptiness, you see. So if you are pursuing a purpose or a goal, it may you may feel like what you really want. It may feel like the next right thing for you. However, if you achieve it and feel a hollow ring of emptiness, then you will realize that perhaps it was more aligned with your ego than it was with source and your high purpose, you see. And so this is one of the ways you distinguish, is this an ego driven goal or purpose for my life or soul driven? Now, an ego driven purpose for your life will leave you feeling empty and still not enough because the lie remains. The lie is in the subconscious. The lie is the the seed, a seed planted in you long ago, long ago, perhaps in the womb, perhaps when you were a young child, perhaps in many lifetimes, this seed was planted. Careful, careful, careful parents, 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 listen up. You have the most important job on the planet. Just a look of your face can communicate disdain or you're not enough to a child when you're disappointed because they're simply doing what children do, you see. Now, we're not saying that to make you feel guilty or shame, parents, to, but to keep you awake and aware, awake and aware, for you are raising up the salvation of this planet in truth. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, what about the purpose of your soul, your true purpose, your high calling? It is to be what you are, which is perfect and blameless and good and right and true. And you say, but Judah, you wouldn't say that if you knew what I said yesterday to my spouse, or if you knew that I stole something last week because I'm really nervous and scared about the holiday and not being able to show up with gifts and whatever it is that you think you've done that has disqualified you from your purpose. Even some of you listening tonight, you might be in a prison house somewhere and you think, well, certainly I've been disqualified. And we would say, no, absolutely not. No matter what you've done in this life or in past lives, there is still a part of you that is innocent and pure and sweet. We can assure you of that because when you were born and you lay in your mother's arms, everything about you was purity and innocence and goodness. And you were able to relax and lay soft and supple and at peace in your mother's arms. This is your essence, your essence. Now, life will try to talk you out of it, but we assure you it's still there. The job is only to remember it. So what is your purpose? Your purpose is to remember, to remember what you are, to remember that you're a piece of God, and then to express that particular reflection of God in what you're doing in the thing in front of you. And so if you are picking up the garbage for your neighbors in your community, 
every day and you're doing it in loving service unto them and in loving service unto God and with complete love and acceptance of yourself, then we assure you, you are in a better state and you have a better goal and purpose for your life than the richest man on the planet who is operating out of manipulation, control, and greed, who has no love in his heart, you see. And this is the lesson that we learn from this very sweet story we enjoy at the holidays of the Grinch. You see, it's not, it doesn't matter what you've experienced in the past or how life has distorted your thoughts and feelings and, and your way of being. If there's some love in you, if you can find a drop of love in you and begin to give it, then you are living in a high purpose, my friend, a very high purpose. And so we don't see things in ranks. You see, whatever dimension in which you dwell, whether it be a dimension of sadness, and lack and limitation, or, or dimensions of peace and joy, we see in each of you this divine spark, which is on its path of evolving back into all that is. And all that is smiles upon you, smiles upon you. Yes. And so we would encourage you not to take your life too seriously. For you might uncover this grand purpose, this particular thing that you are meant to do, and then five or ten years later find it's not at all what you thought, and you might embark on a whole different expression of your divinity. This vessel has been many, many things in her lifetime. She has been in the pizza house cleaning urinals at three in the morning. She has cleaned people's homes, babysat their children. She has been a school teacher. She has uh, been a salesperson. She has been a music teacher. And now look, in her fifties, she is a channeler. What about that? So you, you may think you've got it all figured out and then find out one day when you've achieved this grand goal and purpose that you think is exactly the right fit for you, that perhaps Perhaps it doesn't ring as true as you thought, and now you're off on to something else. So we would say, don't take life too seriously. You can't mess it up. You can't miss it. There is no missing it. Really, in truth, there is no missing it. The only way that you can be in error, my dears, is not to love and forgive yourself, to not love and forgive yourself. Fear is the only error to block out love. So love and accept yourself and others. And in that, you are living your purpose. Jesus said, look at the flowers. They know how to do it. This is our paraphrase and it's quite accurate. You see, a flower doesn't sit about fretting about how it should be something more than what it is or how it can meet expectations of the self and other. No, it simply just is there in beauty and innocence and purity. And it opens when it opens and closes when it closes and dies when it dies. And it doesn't fret about what it accomplished. And what purpose does it serve? It serves no purpose whatsoever except just to be what it is and to be beautiful, perhaps to be beautiful for you. So now the vessel will have some more things to say about this and we support her in her expression. Just as we support you in your expression of divinity. In the ancient scriptures, it is said that each of the billions of souls in the universe, the billions of living beings are pearls strung upon the string, which is all that is, which is God. And so you, my dear, are, are a pearl strung alongside this one and alongside all the others here listening and everyone that you encounter. And all that is, is holding you all together in a beautiful, beautiful pearl necklace. So, wow, it's so great to see you guys. Just wanted to let you know we had such a great week. On January 10th, for Healing Wednesday with Cryon, Judah and I will be a guest there. So we hope that you can be there for that. The Cryon is a beautiful family. We love Lee and Monica. They are our fathers and mothers in the spirit. And they prepared the way for all that happens with Judah and so many other uh, new channelers on the scene. We love them so much. It was a wonderful time. I hope you can be there. Also, January 6th, the first, it's either the 6th or 7th, it's the first Saturday night of January. We will be here in Charlotte. Six. The 6th, thank you. At the Refuge, we can see you in person, give you a hug, 
let you feel the enormous energy in the room. We had such a great time last month. While Chuck and I were God stoned the whole weekend. I mean, if you guys didn't know us, you would have thought we were really high on something. I mean, we really should not have been driving. We had so much fun. We stayed in that state all weekend long and we laughed and laughed and laughed. I mean, Judah and the and the spirit of God was pouring out this just like wine, like this rich wine on us. And we felt so intoxicated, even though we hadn't drunk a drop. And we had a great time. We hope you can come. Okay, let's get back to the topic here about your purpose. So understand that we are always here to serve you and help you sift and sort. When you're thinking about your gifts, your talents, your skills, the stage of life that you're in, because sometimes you're you're shifting from one stage of life. Maybe you're just out of college or maybe you're becoming an empty nester and you want to rethink your purpose. And for a lot of you, what I have found to be very consistently true is that as you increase your level of consciousness, it gets lonelier out there. You have less in common with the people you work with. Some of you awaken and kind of realize, oh crap, I should not be working for this company. They don't have the right motives you just don't line up with them anymore. And sometimes you might've been working for these companies 20 years when you start to awaken and realize, Ooh, this is not a good fit for me anymore. So know that these things happen and we are here to serve you and help you sift and sort through what the next segment of your life as a spiritual person looks like and what you need to do, if anything, to be more aligned in your purpose in the world. Now, the Buddhist tradition says when you're enlightened, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. Now, what I would take away from that to share with you guys is when you enter into an awakened state and you're getting serious about your spiritual growth and you feel that mismatch, you might feel it with a spouse. You might feel it with your family. You might feel it in your workplace. You can feel this kind of gap happening between your perspective and theirs and your level of consciousness and theirs. But I would encourage you, don't get too urgent about doing something drastic. Okay. Sit tight, meditate, give time for the dust to settle and, and allow the universe to bring to you, to your front door, the next thing. Now there are times where you have to leave jobs or leave partners and things like that, but do it from a place of peace to the degree that is possible. Sometimes it's not and do it with care knowing that the ego will push and pull you and try to make you feel urgent about changing. And it will give you a sense of resistance and panic. And that's not where God's purpose for you is found. Okay. God's purpose is found for you in this inner knowing of peace, right? So the more that we understand what's beyond the veil, whatever it is that's out there, the more we will understand why we're here right now, right? And that's why so many people that have near death experiences and they experience what's on the other side, whether they see angels or experience bliss or enlightenment, enlightened states, and then they come back and their whole life is different because suddenly they've been given a window into why they're here. And so we can learn from them, right? I know a lot of you like to listen to these stories, but we can understand that when we have some glimpse of what's beyond, it will change us in the now. So it, it would behoove us and serve us well to consider when I'm on the other side and I look down at my dead carcass, what is it that will really matter to me at that point, you see? Because I'm just Angie right now, but I've been many, many different people over many, many different lifetimes, right? And when I leave this body, I won't be Angie anymore. So you see, we're in living in this dream that we're in. And so part of our task, our purpose is just to wake up inside of it and begin to master it, begin to be the master of our life and create our life rather than being sleepers. You know, when you're in a dream, do you have control of your dream? No, just shit's just happening to you. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad or mix of both, all kinds of things going on and you don't have any control over any of it. Well, we don't want to be that way in our real lot at day to day life. We don't want to be sleepers where we're just letting the tide of life do whatever it does to us and 
and not develop any mastery over it. But you know, the goal is in mastery, what does mastery even look like? Mastery is to be present in the moment, engaged with the people, places, and things in front of you. And we don't have to have some big goal. The goal is to be, right? The goal is to breathe in and breathe out, breathe in and breathe out. The goal is to bring presence into the moment, to bring love into the moment. So we're here to experience life, to experience whatever's going on in front of us. And a lot of you, I talk to you all the time, you feel stuck in a certain area of your life. I'm stuck in this bad job. I'm stuck in this terrible relationship. My kid is acting out and driving me crazy. I'm stuck in this chronic illness. And you feel distress in your in your being because you, you know you're not embodying all that you could as a soul. And you feel this gap between where you are and where you want to be. But I assure you, there is no lack. There is no limitation. And whatever your circumstance is right now, it's exactly the right circumstance for you. I spent some time this year just hashing out again, why am I here? And this is my why statement for me personally. I'm here to, I have it written there, that's why I'm looking this way, to create experiences of divine love and wisdom so that freedom and enlightenment can come. And that's why Judah is here. Judah, you know, doesn't want me just to talk at you. And Judah's not here to just talk at you. Judah's here to give you, right where you are, in the room where you're sitting or in your car, an experience of divine love and wisdom that will change you, set you free to be who and what you really are, to master your own life, to be sovereign in your own life, to be the enlightened being that you really are, to remember that fact, to wake up to that fact. That's why we call it awakening. Awakening to what? Awakening to the truth, that you're a piece of God in the earth, that you're the master of your own life, you're the creator of your own reality. Ramana Maharshi said, the idea that there is a goal is wrong. We are the goal. We are always peace. So to get rid of the idea that we are not peace is all that is required. That's it. Just to get rid of the idea that there's something more that you have to be, do, think, or have in order to be at peace. And Osho taught us that the purpose of life is just to exist, just to be alive, right? You know, the Buddha said, at, it's said that he said at the end of his life, be the light of your own soul. And Osho said this, he said, when I die, my last words will be, be a joke unto yourself, <laughs> right? So with this goal thing, right? Like it's this, this is an American mentality that says that we have to be the best at whatever we're doing. And we have to do something more than we've done already. And this is such a recipe to make us feel like failures. No wonder we feel so crappy. But we can take on this attitude of Ojo's like, be a joke. It's all a joke. It's all a big joke, right? Laugh and have a good time. Be present in the moment. Enjoy whatever's in front of you to do. If you're washing the dishes, enjoy it. Let it be your act of worship. If you're listening to the radio, enjoy it. Sing really loudly and really badly. Let it be your act of worship. If you're kissing your spouse, if you're washing your clothes, if you're making a million dollar business deal, do it as an act of worship. If you're eating a bowl of ice cream, <laughs> uh -oh. enjoy it. Sounds like we got to make an ice cream run. <laughs> so we're here to experience life, to experience whatever's going on in front of us. And a lot of you, I talk to you all the time, you feel stuck in a certain area of your life. I'm stuck in this bad job. I'm stuck in this terrible relationship. My kid is acting out and driving me crazy. 
I'm stuck in this chronic illness and you feel distress in your, in your being because you, you know you're not embodying all that you could as a soul and you feel this gap between where you are and where you want to be. But I assure you, there is no lack. There is no limitation. And whatever your circumstance is right now, it's exactly the right circumstance for you, even though it doesn't feel comfortable. I assure you that you can get comfortable in it. And there is where your miracle is. You see, when I was so uncomfortable for two years, Chuck will tell you, there were so many nights I would cry. I would just cry because all I wanted was just to feel better. That's all. I just wanted to have my health back. I just wanted to walk around the block. I just wanted to, to play with my grandkids at the park. I didn't know if there was going to be an end to it, right? But when I gave all that up and I actually became content with the body I had, with breathing in and out, with just being able to sit next to Chuck and love and just, I couldn't do anything for him. I couldn't be anything to him, but I could feel love for him and I could just sit there and let the love flow, right? And it was in that place that Judah came and what a miracle, right? What a miracle. So our miracles are found in this place where we just let it all go and surrender and we, and we find contentment in the moment. You know, in the scripture, it says godliness with contentment is great gain is great gain. So all the things that you want to gain in life are found in being content with this right here now. You know, if you're in a job that you absolutely hate and you feel like it's slave labor, if you will just set your heart to serve, to serve God, you know, I'm going to pack this box as service unto God. I'm going to do this work as service unto God. You know, I, I'm going to tell you guys a story because it, it's one of my most precious moments with God. And it's this. Years ago, I had all the big dreams, right? You know, I had all these big dreams about being this singer in Nashville. And I'd had some success. I had a, a man invested about $100,000 uh, at no expense to me to go and make my dream record with the very best A-listers in Nashville. And, you know, walking through the airport and people were who is that? That's that, you know, and asking for autographs. And I did all that stuff. Right. And I got there and I made this gorgeous record and it was a dream come true. It was the songs I'd written. Oh man, it was such a great time. Flew home. I had given up my job to follow this dream. Came home. I was broke. I had no money and was waiting, waiting, waiting for that big record deal to come. Right. And I was broke. And I went to around the corner and got a job waiting tables at TGI Fridays because I had to help pay the bills. I had three kids, I had responsibilities. So I just did the next right thing, which was to get a job. And I waited for months and the record deal never came. And that big gorgeous album was just like a shiny Cadillac sitting on the, par on the car lot that nobody ever bought. And so a couple of months into this waiting process, I was waiting tables one night and hustling like waiters and waitresses do. And I accidentally knocked over a glass of water and it fell in this guy's lap. I felt so bad and he was drenched and he started shouting at me and cursing me. And you know, I got down on my hands and knees. I, I cleaned up, I cleaned up underneath the table in the place where he was sitting and just was trying to make it right. And as I was up underneath that table, I'm telling you the presence of God came up under that table with me. And I could feel the pleasure of God, the pleasure of God in me. You see, God was so proud of me in that moment because I received the humility that my circumstance brought me to. And you know, I didn't feel that feeling when people were asking for my autograph. And I didn't feel that feeling when I was shaking hands with stars. I felt the feeling when I was underneath the table, mopping up the water while a man screamed at me and cursed at me and called me names. So see what we think is important may not be important at all. And what could be important could maybe look and feel like a waitress getting cursed out, right? So be here, be now, be in the experience that's in front of you and do the right thing in that experience. Humble yourself, love yourself. Don't judge yourself, love others. And that was a part of that experience. When I was up under that table, I didn't receive what that man was saying to me. I just felt love, the love of God, and I loved and accepted myself, and I received the humility, and I didn't judge the situation. You know, be the master of your own life. Don't take it too seriously. Osho was commonly known to say, I do what I want to do. Do what you want to do. If you want to eat a bowl of ice cream, eat it. If you want to buy an expensive gift, 
for Christmas for somebody, do that. If you want to get divorced, do that. Do what you want to do. You're sovereign over your own life. Remember that Judah is never here to tell you how to live and neither am I. We're here only to support you in living the life that you want to live. So trust yourself a little more. Krishna said, actions cannot defile me because I'm indifferent to results. And all this, all those who understand this will not be bound by their actions. Listen again, actions cannot defile me because I'm indifferent to results. So if there's an action you want to take, if there's a goal or purpose that you want to fulfill, go for that, but do it with no attachment to any result, no expectation whatsoever, whatsoever. Chuck is such a great example of this. You know, he does not expect me to make dinner for him every night, right? He doesn't have any expectation of outcomes. And anything that I do for him, he just receives it as a blessing. And it's just like, you know, a cherry on top of the ice cream. So I want to share one last thing with you guys. I had a really profound experience. It's been about a week ago now. And in this experience, I was an observer of the void. And when I say the void, I mean, you know, we throw around these words a lot. But the way I experienced it was just blackness complete stark blackness everywhere, no light anywhere. And I was observing this void and in the void there was a man holding a board game, like a Monopoly game or something like that, right? And this man was bigger than I could explain. You know, he seemed to me to be as big as a whole universe. And this board game seemed as big as a whole universe. And he was just holding the game. And I could see that the game was completely sealed. It had never been opened. And I knew instinctively that inside of it were billions of possibilities and countless universes and billions and billions of living beings. And so understand, you know, when I saw that, I knew instantly what the message was. It's a game. It's a game. It's a game. <laughs> It's just a big game, guys. Whatever we think we can't live without, whatever we think we have to do, or our lives are not going to be purposeful or meaningful or whatever, it's not true. It's just a game. You are the purpose. You are full of purpose. You are your God breathing and living and loving and laughing and hurting and being sad and being happy and being angry and all that you experience all the possibilities you experience, all of it's good, all of it's okay, and all of it serves a purpose to bring you into the enlightened state that you are as a son and daughter of God. So we'll just ask the Pleiadians if they have a special message for us this evening. Hello, our dear and precious ones here with the Judah family. We love serving alongside of Judah in so many, many capacities. Our team in the Galactic Federation being one of those, However, we love to tag team with this beautiful race. We want to emit our loving transmission into your heart space for this holiday season. We want to give you a special protection of light and peace in your auric field, in your comings and goings, in your travels, in your relating with those who are most important to you. We want to bring a grounding and a centering into your being so that you can remain true to yourself in your interactions. And in all of your interactions, rise above mm -hmm, and maintain your center and your peace. Be true to your understandings of yourself and of life and committed to the way in which you want to express yourself in the earth. We encourage you, do not engage in controversy or complaining, but hold on to your peace. Count your peace as your most prized possession. Guard your heart with all diligence. Remember, not to take things personally, but to release and forgive others. For many who are unconscious, you know that they don't know better. You see, they don't know better. They are simply walking with the light that they have at this time. 
And so we would like to give you now this download of our cosmic light information for centeredness, for peace, for contentment. And as you say, that your feathers not be ruffled by any goings on throughout the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. Good. Let's do that. しててるなでててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててててて